What's up? Some animals are just like humans. They sit as humans, behave as such, and even talk sometimes. I'm all right. I'm all right. You all right? I'm all right. And some of them are able to sacrifice themselves for others. We've collected some examples here. It's worth looking at. Just don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The Leap of Faith Barnacle geese are small birds nesting on the northeast coast of Greenland and in other cold regions. Barnacle geese build their nests high, somewhere on rocks to prevent predators from reaching them. Well, that's pretty reasonable behavior. But when the chicks hatch, something strange starts to happen. Instead of bringing food to the newly hatched goslings, parents expect the babies to come down on their own. Adult geese show them how to jump off a cliff and the goslings follow them. They just walk into the abyss and fall. It happens on the first day of the chick's lives. Of course, they can't fly yet, and parents probably understand that. Sometimes babies fall more than 328 feet, and they risk hitting a rock at any moment. Soft feathers and light weight help them stay alive, but not everyone is lucky. Many chicks sacrifice themselves during this strange educational process. Honestly, it's cruel even for natural selection. It's strange that with this approach to offspring, this species has survived to this day. Tailed Sappers Who do you imagine when it comes to animals that help people find mines in Mozambique? probably some heroic sheepdogs. But sometimes, very different species put their lives at risk. For example, rats. They're smart, social animals, plus they have a great sense of smell. Usually, people use Nesimide gambian rats. They're larger and easier to train, plus they're a local species. All that's missing is proper training. Like Pavlov's dogs, these rats associate stimulus with reward. Only for them, it's not the sound of a bell or a light bulb, but the smell of TNT. If they find the explosives, they get something delicious. Easy peasy. When animals smell a mine, they stop, smell the ground, and start digging. All people have to do is get the explosive device and deactivate it. Rats act much faster than people with mine detectors, and they also don't get distracted by foreign metal objects in the ground, and they cost a lot less. Unfortunately, sometimes these tailed sappers, like any other, die at work, but their sacrifice is not in vain. Explosive Ants You think ants are some kind of harmless creature? Well, you haven't heard of the bullet ant biting. You don't think ants can surprise you? They're bloody explosive! Fortunately, it's not the bullet ants that do it. An explosive species is called Colobopsis explodens and is found in Southeast Asia. Basically, there's nothing unusual about these ants. They're red-brown, about 0.3 inches long, live in trees. But there is one difference. Workers of this species are really able to explode. The two mandibular glands located along the entire length of the worker's body are filled with poison. In territorial conflicts with other ants, workers can contract abdominal muscles very very hard, so when it comes to conflict, they just contract their muscles as hard as they can, and they explode. Sticky, toxic, liquid flies in all directions hitting the enemy. The ant itself dies, but sacrifices itself for other inhabitants of the anthill. White Ants Killers We've already mentioned explosive ants, but this isn't the only species that can do such weird things. Neocapra termis terracua termites from the worker castle at a certain age turn into live bombs. Well, they are alive. Not for long, of course. These white ants live in the rainforests of French Guiana and feed mainly on rotten wood. Although the diet in general doesn't matter, the main thing is the strange bluish belt that these termites wear. During the fight, it bursts and its contents are mixed with saliva. This leads to the formation of poisonous liquid which spills out in all directions and kills enemies. Yes, white ants with built-in chemical weapons. Of course, once activated, the insect dies, but it has time to fulfill its goal to protect the colony. Once again, and this is about termite workers, not army ants. In addition, as scientists say, only old individuals explode. They're unable to do their job well, but they can still serve the colony like this. There's something samurai about that. Battles with orcas 
Sometimes it seems that all sorts of things like protecting the weak are inherent only in people. You do not want to be throwing bicycles. Ha! Huh. Humpback whales know a thing or two about that too. Yeah, these huge phlegmatic creatures that migrate back and forth across oceans and feel great in the company of their own kind, it may seem strange, but sometimes they get into real combat with orcas protecting other species. For gray whales, for example, this species is a little smaller than humpback whales. Orcas are inferior in size to both of them and often hunt calves. This is where humpback whales come into play. There are cases when they have guarded even dead babies for several hours. Why would they do that? It's not clear. What's the point in risking and wasting so much energy protecting a completely different species? That's strange whale altruism. But history knows a lot of examples of that behavior. According to recent studies, over the past 62 years, 115 interactions between humpback whales and orcas have been recorded. It's possible that the whales are gaining some benefit by interfering with their hunting. For example, it's known that orcas attack humpback whales and whales are most vulnerable at a young age. So as they grow up, they help other species to go through this dangerous period. Just imagine, 52-foot nannies. Mother's love. If you're a parent, or if you've at least observed the process of raising children from outside, you probably know that they can be simply unbearable. It seems that children suck their parents dry. Well, in the case of some spiders, it can actually happen. When small spiders of some species only hatch from their eggs, they are still completely defenseless. There's no way to get their own food, no way to protect themselves. At first, the mother herself feeds them, but it's very important for the offspring to become independent, so the mother should awaken their hunting instincts, and then the female sacrifices herself. Yes, you got that right. She presses the babies until they attack the mother. They make their first poisonous bites and then they eat! This creepy process is called matrifagy, that is, eating the mother. Fortunately, it's very rare. But perhaps you're wondering, where is the happy father at this time? Well, it's not that he thinks about things like the condition of his offspring. The main thing about a male is to mate and then die. Sometimes death comes in less than a month, so the father doesn't even have time to live to see his offspring. It's a very sad story from all angles. Raising Octopuses now let's add some drama to our video. Some people see their life purpose in raising children, and there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, everyone has the right to do what they like, but even the most caring human parent doesn't compare to a female giant octopus. These creatures live mostly in the North Pacific and are considered quite large, even for octopuses. Their tentacles can reach up to 10 meters in size. Of course, it's not the Pirates of the Caribbean Kraken, but that's fine too. The strangest thing is the attitude of giant octopuses to their offspring. This species has a rather unusual reproductive strategy. Anyway, for more or less complex organisms. Without the complex terms, everything can be described as follows. Giant octopuses mate only once in a lifetime, then they die. You could even say that reproduction occurs once before death. It's almost Shakespearean tragedy. After breeding, the octopuses enter the aging phase. It involves changes in behavior and appearance that can intensify over a couple of months. In short, the poor start to decay. The males move aimlessly back and forth until they're prey to predators and the females completely stop hunting. They guard the clutch, take care of it, and generally dedicate themselves to the offspring. The female doesn't leave her nest for a second, even to find food for herself. That's why when the offspring hatch, the female is often at death. Sometimes octopuses start to eat themselves to last a little longer. However, it helps for a little while. They end up dying anyway. A sting at the cost of life. I don't think anyone would argue that bees are useful creatures. They produce honey, pollinate flowers, and are beneficial in general. Bees are stylish, and most importantly, they usually don't want to hurt people. Unless, of course, people anger them. Even if you panic at the sight of their stripes, bees sting only when they have to defend themselves and do so in very rare cases. The reason is simple. A sting can cost them their lives. The stinger has a special shape, something like a harpoon. It's very, very small, so it gets stuck firmly in the body of a person or another victim. You can only pull out a mini harpoon with tweezers, and bees don't usually have them. 
After stinging, the insect tries to hide and it's understandable. The bee flies away and the stinger stays inside the victim. And it's okay, but part of the abdomen comes off with it too. And the internal organs. Anyway, it's better not to imagine it. Most of the damage is fatal, but sometimes after a bite, an insect can live. Oddly enough, it depends on the victim. A bee only dies if it attacks an animal with elastic skin. But if the bee stings the other insect, it's painless, but only for the bee itself. Brutal Love Sometimes, love leads to sad consequences. You can lose property. You can get your heart broken, but only if you're not a mantis male. If that's the case, you can exhale. You'll only get your head bitten off. Even people who are far from insect studies know about the aggressive relationship between mantis, about male sacrifice. There are even a lot of memes about mantis, so you probably know how it goes. Almost immediately after mating begins, females of some species of mantis bite off the head of a male. Sometimes it happens right in the process, so to speak, in a fit of passion. Okay, not really. The female's strange behavior is explained quite simply. She needs to provide her offspring with protein at an early stage. I mean, right away. And the male is courageously sacrificing himself even if he doesn't really want it. Afterwards, the female lays the eggs and most likely goes to finish her cavalier. Actually, the mantis feed on butterflies, crickets, grasshoppers, and other insects, not their own kind. But, well, why waste it anyway? Well, that'll be all. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and, you know, stay away from the female mantis. Because, who knows?